Hardtails are rad, and there's dozens of reasons why they still make up such a large share of the mountain bike industry, despite the evolution of full suspension bikes over the last couple decades. And a really big reason for that is their intrinsic value. They don't have a shock, they usually have a much simpler frame design, and there's a little less R&D that goes into making those bikes. But those aren't the hardtails we're looking at today. Instead, I've got five bikes, most of which are handmade out of exotic materials designed to give the rider a truly exclusive riding experience. Seeing as all the bikes on this list cover a pretty wide variety of riding disciplines and some are sold as complete bikes, whereas others are sold only as frame options, using a normal kind of ranking style didn't really seem to make sense. Instead, I devised my very own dentist approved scoring system where I'm gonna score each bike anywhere from one to five dental probes. And to score high, not only does the price have to be high, but I'm also gonna be looking for the type of status that comes with a real solid brand image, as well as exclusivity of the particular bike. And I can't think of a better bike to start this list off than one coming from a company so well in line with the dental industry, I'm surprised they haven't changed their name to reflect that. That is, of course, Yeti, and in this case, since we're talking about hardtails, it is the Yeti Arc. The Yeti Arc is offered in a few different build options as well as two different carbon frame layups. But because we are looking at the cream of the crop today, we're just gonna be focusing on the Yeti Torque T4, which retails for $8,400. But again, because we wanna see that top tier that's out there, we're gonna go ahead and add the optional $1,000 DT Swiss carbon wheel set for another grand, putting the total price of this bad boy at $9,400. Now, when this bike was first released two or three years ago, they did have the anniversary edition, which had that cool blue and yellow paint scheme that you probably saw in the thumbnail. And that bike listed for $9,900. So if you could get your hands on that, that's gonna be that much more rare and exclusive. But that's not to say that this bike isn't pretty freaking sweet too. Not only does it have those DT Swiss carbon wheels, it's also got the top of the line SRAM XX1 Axis drivetrain, as well as a Fox Factory 34 fork. That fork has 134 millimeters of travel, which puts the head tube angle at a relatively comfortable 67 degrees. I would call this thing essentially a down country hardtail if such a category exists. And speaking of down country, it's got pretty down country tires as well with the Max's DHF up front and the Recon in the back. All of that together is gonna to put you at a very featherweight 24.6 pounds. Really, the only knock that I'll give against this Yeti Arc in my dentist approved scoring system is that the Yeti brand, as it's continued to grow, has lost some of that specialness. It's not uncommon to see another rider on the trail who has a 12 year old clapped out Yeti next to you. And if you're looking for that exclusivity and rareness, then you might wanna look otherwise. But if you don't care as much about that and you just wanna get a dialed, super lightweight trail hardtail, then the Yeti Arc is a great option for you. And for that reason, I'm gonna give this bike a pretty dang high four out of five dental probes. That's right, straight out of the box, I'm giving it four dental probes. We'll see if anything else can beat it. And speaking of beating it, I'm pretty sure that this next bike will at least be able to beat it back down the hills because we're going from welterweight cross country machine all the way to the other end of the spectrum. That's right, we're talking about Cro-Mag. And in this case, it's the Cro-Mag Root Down Tie. In terms of price, the Cro-Mag Root Down Tie frame is actually pretty comparable to the Yeti Arc. Both are just about $2,000. But if we're talking about the complete build, then you're actually gonna be getting a quite a bit cheaper bike if you go with the Cro-Mag and that's gonna set you back 5,900 US dollars. And that price difference comes primarily from three different areas. That's the fork, the drivetrain, and the wheels. The super slack 64 degree head tube angle that comes on the route down comes from a 160 millimeter RockShox Lyric Select fork. So it's not gonna be the ultimate fork, it's the Select. So, you know, losing a couple dentist points there, but we're gonna move on. Wheel-wise, it's getting some in-house Chromab wheels. These are great wheels, but they are not carbon wheels. So again, you're saving yourself a little bit of money, but maybe losing a little bit of clout by going with that option as well. And then finally, you are still getting electronic shifting, but instead of getting the full carbon XX1 kit that the ARC comes with, this is gonna be the GX Access build, which Honestly, for a frame like the Root Down, I would be a little nervous to run carbon cranks. Not only would they have the potential to break on some of those big hits, but also I imagine you're gonna be riding through a lot of rocky, chunky terrain and getting pedal strikes with those would not be good. But don't worry, this bike isn't for the peasants. 
Titanium is an awesome frame material and it's only used on super high-end boutique bikes, so that's definitely gonna set this thing apart. And not only that, it's pretty dang light. Chromag claims that this comes in two pounds lighter than the steel version of the root down, putting the frame weight at just 4.65 pounds. So if you like your hardtails to be a bit more aggressive than say that arc, but you still wanna have that standout beautiful bike that you're not gonna run into many people riding on the trails, then this root down tie is probably a great option for you. Because it's not the most expensive, I am gonna have to lower the score down to just 3.5 dental probes, but again, Great bike, whether you're a dentist or not. This next bike, the Sage Flow Motion, the frame alone costs $5,200. And I went ahead and played on that website a little bit, and I was able to get a custom build all the way up, pushing over 11 grand. So what makes that frame so high end? Well, namely, it is once again made out of titanium, but unlike being made in Taiwan like the Chromag is, this bike is hand welded in Portland, Oregon. So it's a US made titanium frame. It's also got pretty similar geometry to that root down. It runs 150 millimeter fork with a 64 degree head tube angle. And speaking of the fork, like I mentioned earlier, Sage does have a feature on their website where you can build the bike up based on the pretty wide variety of custom options they have on there. In my opinion, this just adds to the already very bespoke, one of a kind feel that you get from getting a handmade in the US titanium frame. You can also get them to send it straight to you with basically whatever parts you want on it. I can't really think of a better option for a dentist hardtail than this bike here. And for that reason, I'm gonna give it five out of five dental pros. A perfect score for the Sage Flow Motion. The third bike on our list today is another hardcore hardtail, but this time it's not made out of titanium. It's actually made out of a metal that I've never seen used on any bike other than this company, and that is stainless steel. Starling is the only company I know of that's making bikes with that material, and it makes for some beautiful, beautiful frames, and this Starling Roost is no exception. Starling sells this frame for $1,565, which is the cheapest frame on our list, but to be honest, just looking at that frame, it definitely looks like it would cost quite a bit more. And just like Sage, Starling does have a feature on their website where you can go in and you can select basically any component that you want to have this bike built with, and they will go ahead and build that bike for you and mail it to you. So that's a pretty cool option if you don't wanna go through that process on your own. The frame is designed around a mullet wheel setup. So in other words, 27.5 in the back and 29 in the front. And with a 140 millimeter fork that sets the head tube angle at 64 degrees. Now Starling does say that you can spec this bike with anything from a 120 millimeter fork all the way up to 160 millimeters. So when you go ahead and purchase this frame and build it up, you have lots of options to really make it that one of a kind bike suitable for your type of riding. In addition to that beautiful stainless steel tubing, one of the things that really stood out to me on this bike was the chainstay yoke. It almost looks like a full suspension bike because it's all one nice tubular piece of metal and it kind of sits above the bottom bracket. Again, I've, I've never seen a hardtail with that on there. And so I really think that elevates this bike above other hardtails that might cost a similar amount of money. And so while the price point might not be quite as high as some of the other bikes on this list, I think the fact that this bike just looks so unique and is really unique, I don't think you're gonna see many of these rolling around, really elevates that to that elite level. And for that reason, I'm gonna give the Starling Probe three dental probes. But I'm also gonna add in that if I were to be given any one of these bikes, I'd actually choose this one. The frame just looks really good. I love the features on it. And even though it's the cheapest, if I didn't have to pay for it and I got one given to me, I'd probably pick the Roost. We're gonna finish this list off pretty similar to how we started it, and that is with a carbon fiber XC bike. But in this case, instead of talking about the Yeti Arc, which is a little bit more in that trail category, we're gonna be talking about the Mondraker Podium RRSL, which screams XC race bike. The frame itself weighs just 1.7 pounds, which is absolutely insane. And the complete bike, while it's somewhat hard to find an exact pin down on prices because they're a little bit hard to get your hands on here on the States, I've seen listed for anywhere from $9,500 to $1,200. So we have ourselves a five-figure hardtail on this list. In addition to that beautiful, lightweight, race-ready frame, you're gonna get some pretty dang dialed components as well, starting with a RockShox SID Ultimate with 100 millimeters of travel. 
You'll also get some Mavic carbon fiber wheels wrapped with Maxxis Recon Race tires and a SRAM XX1 Access drivetrain. This bike really does have all the bells and whistles. The only thing you're not gonna be getting is a dropper post and that's because, like I said earlier, it is geared towards that cross country race scene. And if you add all that up, you're gonna get a bike that's under 19 pounds. Now, I couldn't see what size they were referring to. I'm guessing it's probably small, but regardless, a sub 20 pound cross country mountain bike is pretty much unheard of. And if you're looking for something elite and exclusive, then hey man, telling your friends that you've got a 19 pound cross country bike is gonna be pretty impressive. Lastly, I feel like Mondraker as a company kind of hits the sweet spot between being as mainstream and well-known as Yeti with a completely obscure company like Sage. It's kind of right there in the middle. People have heard of Mondraker, they've seen their professionals racing it, but you don't really see them out on the trails. And all of that combined, the brand image, the rarity of the bike, and of course, the dialed component on a super lightweight frame is gonna give this bike a perfect dental approval score of five dental probes. If you want a cross country race bike with a 68 and a half degree head tube angle that weighs less than 20 pounds, and you have the money to buy it, then the Mondraker Podium RRSL is the one for you. So that's a wrap on our five dentist approved high-end hardtails. I already let you know which one was my favorite. It was that Starling Roost. I'd love to hear from you guys which bike on this list was your favorite. You can go ahead and add that down there in the comments. And also let me know if you have any other cool ideas for top five lists because I really enjoy making these videos and it seems like you guys like watching them too. While you're down there, it would mean a lot to me and our channel if you would please like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can see more bike lists like this and a lot of other fun mountain bike content. And then after you do that, you know what to do. Grab your bike, whether it costs $10,000 or $10, go for a ride and hopefully I'll see you on the trail.